Never in history has there been an athlete for whom so many excuses have been made to explain away shortcomings, to explain away defeat, as is the case for Mike. But at the end of the day, Mike's career is a graphic reflection of who he was and what he wanted. He wanted to self-destruct. really at my lowest level to really get the purest out of me. I'm just um, trying to get back into loving it again. I was just um, fighting for, I don't know what I was doing. My mind's been other places for a long time. I had no chance to love anybody or care about anybody because I was just so stuck in the past. The past is a glorious moment, isn't it? The past. Why can I have what I want? Why can I work hard for it? I sweated for it. I didn't steal it. I bled in the gym for it. I beat my body up and I allow people to beat me up. Why shouldn't I have it all? Nobody should take nothing from me. I really have nothing to lose in my life. I have nothing. I lost my soul as a human being. I lost my self-respect. I'm not a lovable guy, so it's really not hard for people to dislike me. A lot of times I just hate myself. Sometimes I think about some of the things I've done to people and some of the ways I hurt people. Sometimes the journey home shows you where that hate and that hurt comes from. We were just poor black kids just that no one cared about, but we didn't care about anyone either. I was just a monster as a kid. The beast survived, you know, the toughest survived, the meanest. You have to be willing to do what no one else would do. Mean, ferocious, bloodthirsty. you just have to be the man. I had all these things in life, but none of them fulfilled that big hole that I had in my life. You know, nothing fulfilled that. So I noticed if none of that, none of that if, you, if I could have all that, and it hasn't fulfilled that hole that I have, it's not gonna do it. So it has to be something else that I'm looking for. You were there for his triumphs. I don't believe there's a man on this planet that can beat me. I looked at him, I saw the fear, and I knew it was going to be a first round. There's no fighter like him. You were there for his failures. James Buster Douglas beats. The victim was led to believe that her meeting. You were there for the moments we'll never forget. To seek an annulment of his marriage. Make sure you kiss me good with those big lips. He is back with a new Holyfield fit by Mike Tyson. I gotta retaliate. Yeah. Lennox Lewis got with your heart. I wanna eat his children. Has upset me. Do you really wanna miss what happens next? Tyson versus McBride. We're pleased to bring you tonight's boxing presentation from our nation's capital. Welcome to Washington, D.C. as one of the most enigmatic, troubled, and apparently endlessly fascinating fighters in boxing history is set to take center stage once again. Yes, this evening, Mike Tyson will be back in the ring for the first time in almost a year. Fight fans, along with curiosity seekers, have made their way to the MCI Center here in the District of Columbia as the crowd settles in for an intriguing card spotlighting the sport's most recognized active fighter and the most famous surname of the annals of boxing. It's fight night in Washington. In our main event, here we go again. Mike Tyson, off his disastrous loss to Danny Williams last July, hopes for a different outcome tonight against Irish journeyman Kevin McBride. Also tonight, she's now the face of women's boxing. 
Undefeated Layla Ali, the daughter of arguably the most renowned sports personality of all time, takes on Erin Tohill. And for openers, local favorite Shambay Mitchell, the former junior welterweight champion, will move up to welterweight as the little big man will square off with Chris the Mechanic Smith. Hello again, everybody. Steve Albert, ringside from Washington, D.C. Well, whether you're a big-time boxing fan or just a casual sports fan, you've probably given the questions some thought. Why does Mike Tyson remain such a curiosity? And why don't we dare miss one of his fights? Sociologists and psychologists could address the subject for hours. For our purposes, a single statement explains a lot. Today's heavyweight division has failed to capture the attention of boxing fans. Some might even say it's boring. Whether winning or losing, whether infuriating or ingratiating, whether outrageous or meek, Mike Tyson is never, ever boring. And with that, let me bring on my ringside partner, Al Bernstein. And Al, can Tyson save his career, and is that important? for the heavyweight division. Well, when you think about it, you know, he's only fought four times in four and a half years. And during that time, boxing has had kind of a mini renaissance. So the sport apparently doesn't need him to flourish. But the heavyweight division, as you pointed out, that's another thing. They need him. They, may, they need something, that's for sure. Now, to salvage his career, he's got to win tonight. And then I think he's got to embark on a vigorous schedule the rest of the year, Steve, which he points out he wants to do. He's got strong motivation to do that, uh, a court-supervised program to pay off his creditors. And his two major creditors are the IRS his ex-wife enough said well for team tyson and the uh, the promoters of course a loss here tonight is unthinkable earlier tonight the arrival of former heavyweight champion mike tyson who has lived his last 20 years with cameras and microphones recording his every move while tyson remains a, a long-running soap opera his career isn't a tv show he can't count on it being renewed indefinitely he turns 39 in three weeks you have to wonder whether he's developed a sense of urgency. If tonight is indeed a fresh start, he cannot afford any more of them. And the arrival of Kevin McBride, the big Irishman, has had 37 professional bouts. And in terms of significance and exposure, not a single one of them even remotely approaches tonight's fight. Last July. McBride was seriously considered as an opponent for Tyson. The nod went to England's Danny Williams instead, and Tyson lost by fourth-round TKO. Tonight, McBride gets a chance to make a name for himself. That's an opportunity most journeymen never receive. Well, perhaps no individual in sports projects more of an aura than... Muhammad Ali, born Cassius Marcellus Clay in 1942. Perhaps the most dynamic figure in sports history. And there he is, still punching. Still such a major presence. The fans recognizing him as he appears on the big screen here at the MCI Center. In his prime, a magnificent combination of power and grace. And despite his battle with Parkinson's syndrome, still such an incredible force. And he'll get to see his daughter uh, box uh, in our second match. And he has uh, watched her carve out a championship. Anybody who has ever come into contact with this man holds on to that memory forever. How about a quick peek while we're waiting into the Tyson dressing room? And that's some shot, isn't it, Al? A couple of generations of heavyweight champions each uh, uh, in a, for different reasons as big an icon as they could possibly be. What an inspirational moment this must be for Mike Tyson. At a point in his life when those kinds of inspirations are sorely needed. The greatest, Muhammad Ali, sitting behind Mike Tyson as he gets ready for his latest comeback in our main event later tonight versus journeyman Kevin McBride. Six foot six Kevin McBride in his dressing room and you have to wonder whether his nerves are running wild. McBride's never been in a high profile bout before. All four of his losses have come by stoppage and tonight he's in with a power hitter who of course tries to eliminate his opponents with the first punch he throws. McBride has won seven in a row, and while it would never be suggested that he could have competed with a prime Mike Tyson, 
From the Irishman's perspective, Tyson McBride has come at the right time. My name is Kevin McBride. I'm from Clonus County, Monaghan, Ireland. When I was nine years old, a friend of mine asked me if I would like to come to a local gym in Clonus, and uh, I said I would. And the uh, first time I stepped into the ring, I loved it. I went on to Barcelona Olympics in 1992 as the youngest ever super heavyweight. Then I turned professional and I had a dream uh, fighting Mike Tyson one day. I said to my father, I love to fight him. And he says, if you dream enough, it'll happen. And that was happening. I love this game so much. I fear nobody, only but the man above, because he's going to judge you at the end of the day. Um, I'm going to show the real Irish power. I've been showing drips and drabs of fights, you know, previous year fights, just doing enough to win. But more incentive now to beat Mike Tyson and get a shot at the title. Regardless of what anybody says, you know, Mike Tyson has a great name. He brings a lot to the table. It's a great name on your record. Uh, and I respect his power, you know, he's, you know, he has tremendous power. But I got tremendous power too, and when I hit Mike Tyson, he's going to think the whole of Ireland's hit him. Uh, mark my words, uh, I'm going to win, and I'm going to show the world that I'm a legitimate heavyweight, and uh, I'm a contender, not a pretender. Yeah, Kevin McBride should be excited. <laughs> if, if you believe a, a win over Mike Tyson doesn't mean what it once did, think about Danny Williams. Here's a guy who is a virtual unknown when he knocked out Tyson mm -hmm. last year. And Al, one bout later, he's fighting for what? The championship <laughs> of the world. That's for sure. You know, the Tyson mystique and his celebrity uh, has potency even for his opponents. And the interesting thing to, to me about this, and it's ironic, is Tyson is not rated himself in the top ten by any organizations. And yet, a win over him gets you rated and gets you big matches as well. Well, here's a guy, Mike Tyson, who hasn't beaten a fighter of consequence mm -hmm. in over a decade, Al. And yet I look around here, I see a pretty good <laughs> crowd. They are here to see a fellow named Iron Mike Tyson. He may not be the same baddest man on the planet from the late 80s and the early 90s, yeah. but they want to see him nonetheless. That's for sure. They really do. And uh, it's the name power. All right. Speaking of name power, let's go to the oh, other member of our right. broadcast team. Here's Jim Gray. All right, Steve, thank you very much. Back here with Iron Mike Tyson. Mike, you were just visited by Muhammad Ali, the greatest of all time. He has visited your locker room on numerous occasions in the past. What was that like for you tonight, and what did he have to say? Well, it was just, um, he said I was a, a bad MF, but um, I'm just looking for, I'm always happy to see the champ. I always, it makes my heart smile to see the champ. He's a wonderful man, besides being the greatest fighter ever. And I'm happy to be around while he's still with us. Uh -huh. Tell us about your knee, Mike, and how it went in your training. Um, I have no problems with my knee. I didn't have any problems. I'm just doing great, and I'm looking forward to fighting again. I'm a little anxious to get back in there. Well, this is the time to be anxious. Uh, how about the training camp? How did it go? I did well. I trained at least 10 to 11 weeks. Um, I did well. Um, I did everything my trainers asked for me. I feel good, boxed around. I'm just looking forward. You mentioned your trainer, Jeff Fennick, will now train you tonight. What about the difference in the change in trainers? I don't know. No big difference. I'm just, I know what I have to do. I've been fighting for a long time. I know what to do once I'm in there. You're a student of the game, Kevin McBride. You've seen the tape. Uh, what is your assessment of him? You said the other day you didn't think he could punch very hard. Well, no. He's a big guy, but um, I'm going to be able to handle him. Mike, thank you. Good luck tonight. Pleasure's mine, Mr. Gray. All right. Back out to you, Mr. Albert. All right, Jim. Uh, thank you so much. The accessible, accommodating Mike Tyson. And I, Mike Tyson, about as subdued as you could possibly imagine him being at any time, especially before a big fight. So it'll be Tyson McBride coming up later in our main event. But coming up next from here in Washington, D.C., we're at the MCI Center. We're about to see unbeaten Layla Ali putting her skills and power on display against upset-minded Erin Tohill as the current queen of women's boxing puts her super middleweight title on the line. And has slipped more of the shots from Layla Ali. And she's focusing her attack on the body now. Coming from mixed martial arts, you know she's a tough, rugged uh, lady. And a little thing like a bloody nose isn't going to stop her. She just keeps marching forward now. Great right by away. Ali. There's another great right by Ali. Let me 
three stop. That's it. Tohu is not offering anything back, and it ends in the third for Layla Ali. Give Layla Ali all the credit in the world. She faced adversity in that round, got hit with some very good body shots, some good left hooks to the head. Tohu thought she was changing this fight. Layla Ali got her in trouble, and Layla Ali in women's boxing is the best finisher in the sport. Now we just talked about it almost on cue. She got her opponent in trouble and ended matters briskly. He just jumped right on Aaron Tohill and finished the job. And Muhammad Ali, once again, a proud papa. Heading over towards the ring to uh, no doubt congratulate his daughter. Here he comes. And he'll hear it from the crowd as he gets into the ring. The greatest. I'm going to congratulate the lady called C.B. Stinger. Of course, a play on words, uh, Ali's famous expression, floats like a butterfly, stings like a bee. And uh, being saluted by the crowd right now is Layla Ali, who remains undefeated, now 21-0, 18 knockouts, and retains her super middleweight uh, title. There's the uh, race with Dan. One thing about Layla, she's inherited the gift of gab from her famous father. Right now, nobody in women's boxing. Layla, got that championship free, baby. There you go, I'll cover a life magazine right there. You're good, you're good, you're good, you're good, you're good. Very touching moment there is uh, Layla and uh, her legendary dad, Muhammad Ali, embraced and kissed. And Rahman Ali, Ali's brother there also. Her uncle, of course. Well, she said she wanted to put a hurt on Layla Ali, but it was certainly the other way around. Here's another kiss from Papa. He's supposed to be over here. Let's get the official announcement right now from our ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of one minute, 59 seconds in round number three. Our referee in charge, Joseph Cooper, stops the contest. She is the winner by way of technical knockout. She is now the WIBA and WBC Women's Super Middleweight Champion and still undefeated, Layla Shebe Stingen Ali. So there you have it, Layla Ali. She said next she wants Ann Wolf if they can work things out. We shall see. Layla Ali victorious once again. Coming up next from Washington, D.C., our main event, former undisputed heavyweight champion Mike Tyson returns to the ring as he takes on unheralded Kevin McBride in a scheduled 10-round bout. Right now, set for post-fight reaction, we go up to the ring, and here's Jim Gray. All right, Steve, thank you very much. Quite a joyous affair in here with the former champion, the greatest of all time, Layla. What's it like for you to perform in front of your dad and, and to have his presence? Well, it's wonderful. I mean, anytime my dad's here, it just adds to my fire, you know what I'm saying? Because he did this, and I'm following in his footsteps, and of course, I want to make him proud. Any child wants to make their father proud, so when he gets in the ring and he has that look in his eyes, like, damn, I wish you'd stop, but I'm enjoying it while you're doing it. And what's it like for you to hear the chants of Ali, Ali, and to bring this, bring this crowd to its feet? I know I have a lot of fans. I got a lot of haters, too. But I got way more fans, and they're always here to support me, and that's a chant that I've gotten used to. But the thing is about me, I'm very mentally strong. So even if they weren't chanting my name, they were chanting somebody else's name, I would still come in here and do the same thing. Your description before we came on camera is that you were vicious tonight. Why were you so vicious? Well, not vicious, Daddy. I was vicious, huh? 
Yep. <laughs> I was vicious. You know why? Because that girl talked so much stuff for a year and a half. She's been talking about, I ain't nothing. I just ain't never fought nobody. I just need to fight somebody her size. And she got all this experience and all this other stuff. And then, you know, I just had to go on the show. So the only motivation I have is when these girls run their mouth, because I know how easy it's going to be for me. Let's take a look at the replay right here as we take a look here. We'll talk to Muhammad in just a second. Tell us what's going on right here. Did she hurt you? Hurt me? Never. I mean, never. I mean, people aren't used to seeing me get hit. That You see how I turned my head with that shot? That wasn't nothing. At no moment did I look like I was hurt, did I look like I was going to retreat. Look at her face, all busted up. Just don't move her damn head. Now here's the finish. Tell us, Layla. Tell us the finish head. here. Huh? This is the finish. Tell us about it. I haven't seen it. Let me see. I don't, I don't even know what I did. All I knew is she was cowered in the corner. You cannot tap out in boxing. See, I was going to tell her. I forgot to remind her. No tapping out. I guess she was trying to tap out. Look at that face. Damn. I jacked her up. Let me ask you, how much of your dad is in your fighting? How much of, of your dad's well, in it? I didn't really show. I, well, <laughs> It's all in the family, you just said, huh? That's right. Well, the thing is this. I can box and I can fight. You know what I'm saying? So it all just depends. When I see that glare look in their eyes, then that's when I turn it on. I was going to try to box her, but, you know, I just do whatever comes to me. I'm working on my boxing more, but I'm nowhere near like my father. My father's the greatest. I'm not trying to be like my dad. Champ, let me ask you, what's it like for you to watch your daughter? She, she, she talks like me. She, 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 she talks like me. Talks like you. Does she fight like you? I back it up too, huh, Daddy? She's bad. I'm She's bad. 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 She's bad. bad it's great lady. to see you. She's a bad lady. She's a really good man. The what? Really good man. It runs in the family. She's a bad Layla, what next? What next? And you're the first I am the first WBC, 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 WBC female championship yeah. belt holder. So I have another title. Not only did I retain my title, I have another one. So now I have five belts at home. I got them running out of space for all these belts. You know, and who else should be fitting more than me? Dad put her on. So next would be you, you were oh, elected not to get into the million dollar thing. Well, no. What, what well, do you I, want I to do? No, I don't have no interest in fighting these little women for what? Why do I want to fight these little women for? Look at the big woman. She couldn't even take it. I fought Christy Martin. I didn't get no credit for that, obviously, because she's so much smaller than me. She should have never been in there with me in the first place. But, uh, you know, what it's, about Ann? Ann Wolf is somebody we definitely, everybody that knows me knows about Ann, knows that there's been a lot of controversy over that because that fight hasn't been made. Hopefully when she gets out of her promotional contract because her promoter and my promoter don't get along. That's, That's the, odd in boxing, isn't it? Even right, in women's right, boxing. Right, right. But you know what? The truth is people don't realize you're supposed to save the best fights for last. After I fight her, who am I going to have left? So I don't know what everybody's rushing for. All right, Layla, congratulations. Nice to see you. I'm beating all these chicks. Can none of them see me? None. None. Bad lady. All right. Like, it used to be like father, like son, but it's like father, like daughter, Steve. No question about it. Thank you very much, uh, Jim Gray. Of course, uh, Christy Martin had her problems with Layla Ali, Christy, and Lucia Riker getting together in a long awaited showdown Saturday, July 30th on Showtime pay per view. Winner to take home a million dollars in the title of Million Dollar Lady. And as Layla Ali pointed out, she had her way with uh, Christy, and Lucia Riker is just too small for Layla Ali. As we stand by for Mike Tyson, who's fighting for the first time since injuring his knee at a TKO loss to Danny Williams last July. In fact, Tyson has fought only once per year since 2001. Over the last three years, he's boxed a total of only five rounds. And he's lost two of his last three bouts. Hard to believe, but Tyson was first crowned a champion almost 20 years ago. His prime is long past, but he remains a compelling figure, if not a compelling fighter. Jim Gray recently sat down with Tyson at the heavyweight's home in Phoenix. How often do you look back into your past and you think of what you had in terms of your career, the championship, the millions of dollars? How often do you review it in your mind? Well, I feel real good about myself. I'm proud of myself overcoming the demons that I possessed at one particular time. And um, I am who I am now. I don't even relate to that guy. I don't even know who that guy is. I watched Mike Tyson box in 1988. I don't know that guy. I have no inclination. I have no, no kind of affinity with that gentleman. What's your evaluation of the Danny Williams fight? Well, Danny Williams has to believe he's the most luckiest man in the world because anybody that watched the fight would have to know that guy was, he was immense to me. He was about to be knocked out if I didn't break my leg in that, in that first round. And that's all, that's all it was, was just oh, because of your knee injury. Absolutely. Oh, something happened to Tyson. Douglas, Holyfield, and Lewis, the only guys you had lost to. 
Now you put Williams in there. Does the name Williams embarrass you? Oh, yeah, because that's, if, you know, anyone that knows me, that's a one-round fight. That was going to be a one-round, if anything, the most two-round fight. Danny Williams has upset Mike Tyson in round four. And the fact that that happened, I was just, I was just devastated. Have you watched the tape of that fight? Never watched that fight. Why not? I, I just, just didn't want to look at it. What do you know about Kevin McBride? Um, I don't know anything about him. I seen him fight once or twice on a film somebody showed me. Um, he didn't look too impressive. So is this simply a matter of you getting back into the ring against somebody, anybody, and getting no, a victory? No, I'm just, I don't underestimate him. I take him lightly, because as we know with Danny Williams, anything can happen. But um, being a fighter, being very confident, I don't believe he's capable of beating me. Why do you think so many people have purchased tickets to see you fight when, in essence, you really haven't, you haven't been a great fighter for a number of years? I don't know. Um, it depends on what's your definition of a great fighter. A great fighter is someone that fills the seats up. I've always been capable of doing that. I mean, that, that are was... you a great fighter in your mind now? Oh, absolutely. You are? Yeah, absolutely. This day? Yeah. Absolutely. I'm not talking about what you were. No, I'm talking absolutely. about today. Absolutely. Absolutely. My record speaks for itself. And besides losing to um, the guy that I lost, all the guys that I lost to were world champions. And when I did lose to him, I put up great fights. And losing to um, Mr. Williams, everyone would know, if anybody from a boxing standpoint would know, that was a big fluke. How would you describe the current state of the heavyweight division? I don't know. Um, oh, you know. You watch these guys, all these, these guys. These guys know. are doing their best. And, um, are there any of the guys who hold the belt who you feel you can't beat? No. Once I'm in physical and mental form, no. Mike, you had often told us in previous interviews that you were destined to have a bad finish to your life, that it was going to end like Sonny Liston, out in a blaze. Is that still your feeling? No, I like was saying, I was a wild guy. People liked hearing that stuff. People love writing. That was something great to write, and people always were sympathetic to us. But man, please, I see a lot of great things in my future. I don't even stick to that stuff. I'm just surprised I had so many great things in my future. I'm thinking, is this going to be a dream? Is this real? I'm just, like I said before, I'm just um, pretty content with my life right now. So has Iron Mike turned into Mellow Mike? Whether he has or not, Tyson needs to punch with the type of intentions that once made him the baddest man on the planet. And aging fighters' power, the old timers will tell you, is the last thing to go. As we close in on our main event from our nation's capital, former heavyweight champion Mike Tyson faces relatively unknown Kevin McBride. Well, there's still something about Mike Tyson. Part of the fascination, no doubt, is related to the moribund heavyweight division, where there are plenty of titleists, but no champions, and plenty of familiar names, but no stars. And part of it is very simple. Long ago, Tyson was stamped onto our collective consciousness, and he remains there. Consider that the lightweight title fight between Diego Corrales and Jose Luis Castillo, which has been called one of the greatest fights in history, drew a crowd of about 5,000 fans. Tyson McBride sold that many tickets the first hour they were on sale. And with that, back here with my partner, Al Bernstein. Getting back to the, the fight with Danny Williams, do, do you think the knee injury caused Tyson to lose in effect costing him a shot at the title well certainly Tyson's camp spins it that way and they feel that very much but the knee injury at the end of round one well it certainly had an impact on Tyson's performance in this fight but let's remember that he failed to finish Williams off in the first round when he had him hurt and the Tyson did land some big punches after the knee injury so he still had some effectiveness now, I think Williams power counter punching and poise under fire were also big factors in Tyson losing now tonight Kevin McBride needs to avoid being awed or intimidated by the moment or by Tyson for that matter and he has to have the clarity of thought in the ring that Williams had 11 months ago that will allow McBride to execute his game plan. McBride needs to buy time he can do that by smothering Tyson hold grab get through the first and second rounds. You can hit Tyson with an uppercut, and McBride likes to throw that punch. His power is in his right, and it is a bit unconventional. This scene will be reenacted tonight because Tyson will be in close. When he is, look for a right hook that McBride throws. Now, when this punch lands, it can catch an opponent on the temple, where 
the equilibrium is compromised. And it worked very well here to get Kevin McBride a knockout win. He'd like to use it against Tyson tonight. In recent years, Tyson has often thrown punches without good leverage, without his legs and body, and the blows can lack power. Until he proves otherwise, conventional thinking is he'll lose steam as the fight goes on, and McBride can be hit with the left, and Tyson uses that punch in a variety of ways. Against Danny Williams, it was a festival of less. One to the body, and then he would use an uppercut to the head, and that started a series of left hooks that Tyson threw that were very, very effective. McBride can be hit with left hands, and Tyson will throw this punch repeatedly in this fight, and he'll work it both to the body and the head. And despite the prevailing opinion that Mike Tyson is shot, unfocused, and undisciplined, this has the elements of a short and painful night for Kevin McBride. Massachusetts by way of Clonus, Ireland, coming into the sound of the bagpipes. Heavyweight champion of Ireland, but in all honesty, nobody's come forth to challenge him since 1997. A 92 Irish Olympian, youngest super heavyweight ever at the Olympics at 19. 27 KOs among his 32 wins, but mostly soft opposition. Stomped on a lot of guys with losing records, and when he stepped up three times, he was knocked out. Also stopped in the third by English journeyman Michael Murray, who had one win in his last 18 fights. McBride being paid a reported $150,000 versus $5 million for Tyson, most of it going to creditors and his ex-wife, Monica Turner. He's a slow, plodding, straight-ahead inside fighter who has probably gotten away with mistakes in the past because of size and strength. Untested on this level, even this version of Mike Tyson. And man, is he hearing it from this crowd. to prepare for Tyson. That might come in handy even now. Not to be disrespectful, but unless the hypnotist can stand in front of McBride and absorb Tyson's blows, not sure it'll make a difference. He's got a few fans here, but this, make no mistake, is a Mike Tyson gathering. You have the inevitable comparison, says he's not Peter McNeely, another Boston area fighter of Irish descent who didn't make it past the, a minute 29, dropped twice before his corner rushed in to prevent further punishment. Continues to hear the booing. The bagpipes, Al, are trying to drown it out. There's no question this is a moment that Kevin McBride has never faced before, and these are the moments that often defeat fighters, especially Tyson the opponents. Obviously fueled by Danny Williams, but will he bring the, the heart, determination, and chin that Williams brought to the ring last July? McBride, a, a hero back in the 
in the Boston area. Just not used to hearing that kind of reaction. Now a different story. Mike Tyson coming from backstage about to enter center stage for the 58th time in his tumultuous 20 year career. Tyson's presence, a growing number of people feeling sorry for the former champ. Others have grown tired of his act and doubt his sincerity. Does Tyson even care what people think about him? Probably not. Say what you want. This is a guy who lost 11 months ago. His best days long behind him. This crowd rose as one and gave him a massive ovation. The, 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 the Tyson phenomenon is still alive. And uh, perhaps the key issue here, if Tyson loses, which most feel couldn't happen tonight, even if he tried, is he through? As we check the tail of the tape, Tyson 39 on June 30th, nearly seven years older. When you consider Tyson closer to 5'9", more like a nine-inch height advantage from McBride. Tyson gives away nine inches in reach. McBride, a career heaviest, 271, 38 pounds more than Tyson, who's the same weight when he lost to Danny Williams. All right, fans, here we go with our main event of the evening. Ten rounds of boxing and a heavyweight special attraction. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, live from Washington, D.C., it's showtime! <laughs> Introducing to you first, on my right, fighting out of the blue a corner, entering the ring wearing tartan trunks, Fighting out of Dorchester, Massachusetts, by way of Cronus, Ireland. He weighed in at 271 pounds, with a record of 32 wins, four losses, and one draw. He has 27 wins, coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the heavyweight champion of Ireland, known as the Cronus Colossus, introducing Kevin. McBride. And his opponent across the ring on my left, fighting out of the red corner, really needing no introduction the world over, wearing black trunks and hailing from Catskill, New York. His weight already 233 pounds, his record 50 wins, five losses, two no contests, with 44 big wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the youngest man ever to hold the heavyweight title, the former undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, introducing the one and only Iron Mike Tyson. Once again, Joe Cortez is our referee in charge. Ten round scheduled bout. Yo, I want everybody out. All right, gentlemen. We one of the rules in the dressing room. I expect a good, clean fight. Obey my commands at all times. Punches here are good. Punches here are good. Remember, guys, I'm fair, but I'm firm. Touch them up. 
The mammoth McBride towering over over Tyson, who as usual looks cut and fit. It seems the, the Tyson camp always tells us Mike will take his time. Be patient. Not rush in. <laughs> He'll slip, move, counter, show his skills. But how many times have we actually seen that as Tyson usually pounces at the bell? You may have heard of Kevin McBride, but you probably never saw him fight. The old joke is don't blink. Although McBride insists he'll shock the world and KO Tyson, but that expression just doesn't carry the same significance it once did. Very small ring, so if somebody did need to move a lot to get out of trouble, or they could, um, they're not going to be able to. Joe Cortez, the referee. Here we go. And it's McBride throwing first and missing. Oh, oh. For once, they told us the truth. Mike Tyson didn't run out. In fact, he's staying on the outside. That isn't to suggest he's not going to get very aggressive, but he's kind of staying on the outside, biding his time right now. You'd think the bride would want to tie Tyson up. Hold on, hold on. Push ahead. him back, avoid his power, of course. Try to get past four or five rounds and hope Tyson tires. A lot will depend early on Joe Cortez. Will he let the... McBride kind of working the inside. We let him tie up Tyson. Oh, hey, hey. How quickly will he right. come in? He's coming all right, in. Let me hold up. Take him time. Go hold him, all right? Let's go. Well, that's a quick warning from Joe Cortez for holding to Kevin McBride. McBride's trainer, Goody Petronelli of Marvin Hagler, uh, Fame told us their plan is to keep Tyson at the end of McBride's jab, get Tyson as he's coming in with the left or right uppercut, which was an effective punch for Danny Williams against Tyson last July. All right, you know, Mike Tyson is fighting back, back. an odd first Get round. Back. It's really interesting. Even the punches he's choosing to throw are odd. I don't think he's worried at all that McBride will hurt him. He's picking an odd choice of punches. There's a, a left hook that he ripped in. A long left by, by Mike Tyson. There's something down. else Mike Tyson's doing, and it might not hurt him tonight, although he's getting hit on the inside. He's squaring himself up to McBride. Oh, look, and oh, hold himself on. a very inviting oh, time. Let's go. It's interesting. I don't know that McBride can take advantage of that, but somebody else might. Hold it out. Get off. Tyson get off. missing with the oh. right. From hold Tyson's hold on, hold camp. On. Get the head off. Get the head off the head. We're told they want rounds. To build up stamina. All right, all right, bring up, bring up, Tyson fatiguing is ludicrous. That fatigue had nothing whatsoever to do with the loss to Williams. It was 100% because of the knee injury. Over the top comes McBride. And then the right uppercut. Right, bring up, bring up, bring up, bring up. Bring McBride's up, bring up. landing those nutty, clubbing right hands that he throws. And the danger for Tyson is that one of those will hit on the two. All right, bring up, bring up. I've bring seen up, McBride's up. punches do before. And then the, the power doesn't have to be so dramatic to hurt you. <laughs> Kevin all right, McBride, bring up, who, bring up, bring up, bring up, bring up, bring up, bring up, bring up. Oh, oh. Hey, continues to on, hold on, and on, hit. Let me have a break. Let's go. It's been a competitive first round, not artistic, but competitive. Final 10 seconds of the first round. Many thought it would be over by now. All right, time! Tyson has to get up and uh, get to that big six foot six inch McBride missing with the, the left hook. Not going to the body that much in round one, though he did get there a couple times. There's a hook that just glances off the face of McBride, thrown in an odd manner. Tyson is still throwing a lot of arm punches. Now, there were moments in the last round where the body work was effective. There he throws on the inside. Look how he's squaring right, himself up, go. though, against making himself a, really a pretty easy target, but McBride not the greatest counterpuncher on the play. Well, without question, Kevin McBride, who's never fought on this level, certainly not in awe of Mike Tyson. Off the lunging left hand by, by Tyson. Now he holds back. 
those left hooks are so wide and so sweeping and such arm punches. You know, I mentioned in the keys, Tyson doesn't want to keep throwing those arm punches. That's what he's doing. All right, all right, hold it. All right, all right, hold it. Bring up, bring up, please. Not an easy job for Cho Cortez. Referees, uh, no matter how much experience, always tested in various ways in a Tyson fight. Biggest hope not to be a factor. You know, McBride's right, plan up, part of it up, was to hit, up, land an up, uppercut as Tyson came rushing in, but Tyson hasn't really rushed in that much. Now, the J McBride jab has actually kept Tyson kind of at bay. He's landed some pretty good jabs. That's what he said he wanted to do. As he now uh, ties Tyson up and rolls right, a couple right, of rocks right, along right, the chin. Right, Tyson right, not clean, right clean. Clean. What, clean. What's being thrown is being thrown right now by McBride. So a very passive round and a half or so for Mike Tyson. Of course, he has the kind of power that can change that instantaneously. McBride that continues to lean that big body on top of, of Tyson, hoping that that could be a, a factor as time wears on. Right, right, break up, Maybe tire Tyson out. No, I, don't, I don't want you guys holding. Let's go. Body shot by Tyson. But McBride on phase. Go hold it inside. Now, obviously, in terms of hand speed, Tyson has the edge here. He's not throwing a lot of punches. McBride, not a, not a very quick punch. Right, right, and break yet, up, he's been able to land McBride when he does throw. And that's part of the defensive liabilities we've seen from Tyson. There's a low blow by Tyson. Getting cautioned by Joe Cortez. McBride right back to it. It's the upper hook from McBride. It's right, not a big punch, up, but him, him, he can get it in. Go. McBride basically fights one way forward, but slow. Not a lot of movement, mainly punches one at a time. He does have power. Now things could change, of course, but to this point, if this is Mike Tyson's way of getting left by just kind of standing around, you have to wonder if this will help him in the long run. And if you're not a boxer and you're a puncher, you're, you're, it's hard to be in this posture and make rounds look good. Oh, yeah, oh, oh, but Brian yeah, landing yeah, on the yeah, inside yeah. there as he ties Tyson up. Two of the punch. Mike Tyson throwing wide sweeping hooks. I mean, that's, you know, open, wide open to be countered. Nice uppercut on the inside. And again, the hook, mostly an arm punch. And McBride uh, making him miss. This is the left hook downstairs that Tyson throws that was definitely low. Yep, that's below the belt line. And uh, Joe Cortez giving him a warning. You have to assume that if that happens again, a point right, might be up. deducted. Right, now, McBride up. wants to land this uppercut. Now, he, he's... It's not a great punch. That's holding and hitting there by McBride. And there's that clubbing right hand and the uppercut. He can get a few things done on the inside because it's a small and broad punch. Tyson comes out with a little more flair here in round hold, hold, three. Right. Joe Cortez right, better look out. He's losing control right, hold on, on the hold inside. Hold on, Mike. Hold on, all right, all right. And they're big men to handle. The McBride uh, trying to lean on Tyson, as we mentioned, use his weight advantage whenever the fighters clinch. And he gets in a short right hand. All right. Kevin McBride, as you can see, hardly a textbook puncher. Doesn't throw punches correctly all the time. Tyson, if you notice, keeps biting his glove. His left glove. Oh, watch your hands. Watch your hands inside. Watch, oh, watch your hands inside, guys. Come in. Go ahead. Something he used to do as an amateur long time ago. Is he reverting to old Stop habits? right there. Stop right there. Stop right there. Good, good. That's good. That's good. Well, we're, we're into round three, and so far, it's really an artistic effort. Is Mike Tyson biding his time? Right, go, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Attacking the way he needs to to get Kevin McBride out of there. 
And how much credit can we give to McBride for hanging in there? And again, McBride goes for the tactics of tying Tyson up. And it's hooked by Tyson. He's the best punch in the fight. He momentarily got free and unleashed right, the up, left hook and got it home. Past the halfway point of round three. Let's go, let's go. Tyson now ripping hard uppercuts. McBride continues to stand right in there and take it. And you know what Kevin McBride's doing that's very smart? Look at how close he is to Tyson. Look at my smother and survive. And he knows that. Tyson holding up, biting his left glove. Body shot. McBride upstairs. McBride's breathing pretty heavy as well. So right, bring just up, bring the fact that he might get Tyson into the fifth or sixth round hardly guarantees him of a victory. And Tyson is doing most of the effective punching what's being done. Right no, now. don't hold, don't hold, don't hold him, my man. Don't hold ahead. Let's go. The pride pulling the head down of Tyson, getting warned by Cortez. You know, Danny right, Williams, up, who is a much better technical fighter than... Uh, McBride was able to land the uppercut very effectively on his side. McBride is throwing it, but it's just not accurate. Tyson oh, continues to oh, swing and miss. Oh, break out clean, break out clean. Right. Body shot hold, 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 by hold. Tyson. One and done. All right, time. Three rounds complete. We've done six right rounds before, Mike. There's not a problem at all, champ. Just breathe for me. And listen to me, Mike. Mike, we've got to come back with the second punch. If the right hand misses, the left hook will land. If the right hand hits it, the left hook will land. We've got to throw more than one punch. I oh, know you're right, champ. Three that, champ. Three that's right for me, Mike. Three that, that's it. Mike Tyson using the jab, which has been not very effective throughout. And there's... McBride saying, okay, come on. You know, he's he's unintimidated at this moment, Kevin McBride. You can say that for him. And on the inside, McBride just kind of mauling him, and that's the best right, left hook probably Tyson has thrown in this take fight. Out. And uh, McBride unfazed, at least for the moment. What you saw there, really, Steve, was the, this fight in microcosm. A kind of rough and tumble, inartistic effort by both men. Nice right by Tyson to start off this round. Tyson punching with more evil intentions now to begin the fourth. Now, McBride's doing the right thing. He's getting up, curling up in a ball and getting as close to Mike Tyson as he can. That's the right thing to do to get through that onslaught. For whatever it's worth, Kevin McBride strategically is doing the right thing, and that may extend his shelf life in this fight. Yeah, it doesn't make for an exciting fight, but look out as Tyson. With oh, a borderline oh, shot there. Wow, another low one. McBride looks to hang on. The shot's now landing with a little more regularity and harder and cleaner by Tyson. Good body work by Tyson. Some not legal, but some legal. Banging to the body. Oh! oh. Okay, we got it. Okay, and the head used head. by Tyson. Now well, the old Tyson's not completely gone, is he? He bites the glove and comes around with an overhand right. Now, if McBride gets through this onslaught, it'll be very interesting to see what happens in this round and this fight. This is the part where Mike Tyson has decided I want to go after him. Tyson looking to step and turn, but couldn't fire because he got tied up. McBride with the jab. Tyson missing, but banging with the left hook to the body. Right, better be careful as yes, Tyson has some distance and leverage. Mike Tyson is a mess defensively, but it doesn't matter in this fight. Right. Okay, not able to counter him as well as he might. All right, break out clean, break out clean. Under a minute, round four. Scheduled for ten. The body work of Tyson has been very, very good in this round, though, certainly, and that could have some big impact. 
in the next round or two. All right, all right, break out, break out, clean, break out. Tyson looking to end matters on one punch, but that right hand did not have full impact. All right, break out, clean, break out, clean. Remember, Kevin McBride, a whopping 271 pounds, 38 pounds more than Tyson. That's a big difference. And when he hangs all over Tyson, it could have an effect on Tyson if the fight goes deep. We're going to a fifth. Breathe. Breathe. Water, water, water coming. It's okay. Now listen to me, Mike. Mike. You know when you throw the right hand in the body? You're hurting with it every time. The right hand in the body, breathe. Sit up. Sit up, take a breathe. Keep breathe breath, out. Keep breath. Now listen to me. The right hand is what it's asking for body work from Tyson, and that is one of the things he's done well in this spot, at least in spots. That was a good right hand downstairs. And for a little while in that round, it looked like that body work was really getting to Kevin McBride. Now, on the inside, for the most part, well, there's the use of the head by Tyson, and he is a master at that. And then here comes the left hook and the head, alternately. And Tyson is a very tough inside fighter. And he's using everything at his disposal. Round number five. Well, you know, my, oh, good right by Tyson. Tyson last reached the fifth round three years ago versus Lewis, and McBride hasn't been past five right, since right, 2003. Right so both right. men heading into territory they're not used to recently. Tyson also going to the forearm tactic, you may have noticed. That's a good left hook downstairs. That, you know, if McBride had better technique, Mike Tyson would have been hit with a lot of punches tonight, but he doesn't. He is a lumbering giant of a heavyweight hanging in there against the former champion. And I'll tell you, when he gets on the inside, McBride's able to land those little short right hands. How much damage they could possibly do to Tyson remains to be seen, but he's getting those punches in. Tyson, though, showing that obviously a shell of himself. So far, yes. Take a look at the press row scoring. Oh, kind of interesting. George Willis from the New York Post has it even through four. I have Tyson ahead by two points, but you can you can make a case for the even scorecard very easily. Right hand of the body by Tyson. Tyson is throwing some good shots down there. There's no question. There's the McBride jab landing. And you know, you can land the jab against Tyson. Williams did it. God knows we saw Lewis do it. Almost uh, oh, it's it's too it's easy. Those little clubbing right hands on the inside still getting in by Kevin McBride. Tyson biting the left glove, standing there, no movement. Just a target for McBride. And he's landing rights on the inside, comes across with the left that graze him, a right uppercut on the inside by McBride. This was the game plan for McBride. And for the most part, it's keeping him in this fight. And right now, look at a stationary Mike Tyson not throwing too many punches. And McBride popping shots off Tyson's head. And Tyson right, is starting right, to look up, up, weary. He has slowed considerably. Sure has. And now McBride from the outside able to up, land up, punches. Well, we saw this in, against Danny Williams. And look when he throws punches. He throws arm punches, kind of squaring himself up. Tyson does, and a big uppercut on the inside by McBride. That was the best right. punch he's thrown in this fight. A right hand by Kevin McBride that had to instill a lot of confidence. Now he goes to the body and back upstairs. Kevin McBride controlling the pace. Mike Tyson's in trouble in this fight right now. He better come Question. back. Final seconds of the fifth round. An alarming moment for Tyson and his camp. Breathe, Mike, breathe. Breathe and listen to him. Sit forward on the Mike. Mike, don't. Mike, 
tight. You don't have to punch if you tight. Hold him, tie him up. Just forget him, just hold. Be smart, Mike. Don't give him the shots in the middle. It's the shots we're smoking about. Breathe. Well, a rugged round for Mike Tyson. That was a terrific right hand to the body and another one by McBride. And once he got Tyson on the inside, he landed some very good uppercuts. A punch that we know you can get in and he was going to rely on. Good work by Kevin McBride. And just as important, I think, he leaned on Tyson. He sapped his energy by putting all 270 pounds on him, holding him against the ropes, and making a very fatigued Mike Tyson head back to his corner. Well, in the past, one punch power would barrel Tyson out. On McBride, McBride doing the wise thing and tying him up. But look at what he had. He's trying to break his arm again. We've seen this look before. It. Oh, and McBride injures his left time. arm. Okay. Hey, oh. come here. Come here. Mike, I don't want any more fighting with the arms, you understand? You too. I want a free fight. You hear? Let's go. Time in. Remember the Tyson Francois both the fight. When he oh, messed oh, up oh, both yeah. his arms. On, We're now on, in an area where let's let's Tyson go, is very let's frustrated. Let's guys. And now there's let's blood go. around the left eye hey. of McBride. Hey. Hey. All hey. of a sudden, a cut hey. opens up. It looks like it's over the left hey. eye. That came, I believe, from a clash of heads. Whether intentional or not, that's another hey. question. Yeah. You see me? Because of the cut. So Tyson reverting to roughhouse tactics here. It's an awful round for Mike Tyson. And a right hand upstairs. A real conundrum for McBride. He wants to stay on the inside, but the roughhouse tactics with the head and everything else are making him not want to be on the inside. It's up to Joe Cortez to really take control now of this fight. And it's a tough so this has really gotten dramatic here now in round six, midway through. And Joe Cortez really has his hands full. Right hand to the head by Tyson, but McBride undaunted. Showing his heart and landing with those lefts. But those shots not as powerful, of course, as Tyson. Remember, two points deducted from Mike Tyson in this round. Less than a minute remaining, round six. All right, bring it up, bring, bring right there. In a fight that has shifted dramatically, McBride landing the uppercuts from close range. Things have turned for McBride. Tyson, too far away, a right uppercut, two right uppercuts oh, landing right by McBride right on the chin. Right and those were delivered well. Those were delivered with him bending at the knee, and they had some power. Kevin McBride, a journeyman, is making Mike Tyson look like a third-tier heavyweight. 15 seconds left of the sixth round. And if McBride actually wins this round, it would be a 10-7 round. 
takedown, but Grimes is pushing Tyson down. I think in boxing sometimes fighters, at some arbitrary time, they reach a point where they've taken more shots than they're willing to take. And Mike, I think, just reached the point where he said, you know what, what do I, what do I need this for? I'm just getting beat on by this guy. I, I can't do anything with him. I mean, what am I doing here? I mean, let, let's just call it a day. And he's having difficulty getting up. Come on. He wants Joe Cortez to help him. He can barely make it to his feet at the bell. That was a push. Obviously a push. That was a push. Tyson totally disorganized. Hey, leave it to me, leave it to me. say the least. First, Mike Tyson twisting the arm of... It's Mike over, Al. It's over. Kevin McClyde is the winner. Mike Tyson quits all. He's not coming out for the seventh round. It's all over. Kevin McClyde has defeated Mike Tyson. stunned crowd here at the MCI Center in Washington, D.C. as journeyman Kevin McBride defeats Mike Tyson, who quits on his stool. I've got to say it, Al. Logic would dictate that Mike Tyson should think about retirement. But Quit. logic and boxing don't necessarily go hand in hand. Well, for Mike Tyson, whatever currency he had in terms of marketability is likely gone now. And what we need to remember is he lost tonight to a, he a journeyman heavyweight who, while he showed lots of heart and some intelligence, I may add, with the way he fought, clearly is not the most skilled heavyweight out there. So for Tyson to lose to him sends a very, very strong message. But give this man credit. His 15 moments of fame, 15 minutes of fame, might be 30 minutes because of what he did here tonight. All right, now let's get the official announcement from our ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout has been stopped at the end of round number six. Upon suggestion of the corner, our referee in charge, Joe Cortez, stops the contest. The winner by way of technical knockout, the Clonus Colossus, Kevin McBride. How many of you out there actually thought you'd be hearing those words from Jimmy Lennon Jr.? Mike Tyson has now lost two straight, three of his last four, losing his last two to journeyman. Hasn't beaten the fighter of consequence in over a decade. Jim Gray is up in the ring right now with Mike Tyson. Jim. All right, thank you very much, Steve. Mike, first, let's start with you. Did you want to continue? Well, I would like to continue, but I saw that I was getting beat on. I realized I don't think I have it anymore because um, I got the, the ability to stay in shape, but I don't got the fighting guts, I don't think, anymore. When did you recognize that? At what part of the fight? I don't know. Early into the fight. Um, I'm just sorry I let everybody down. I, mean, I just don't have this in my heart anymore. Well, the reason I fought Kevin McBride was just for a payday. I didn't really think I was winning or anything. I didn't anticipated winning. It was just a whole mindset I had. I didn't really care. I was so out of shape. I was tired. I wasn't taking it serious. 
We were just fighting for the payday. Did you feel as though you had it coming into the fight? Um, no, I'm, I'm just fighting to take care of my, um, my bills, basically. I don't have the stomach for this kind of no more. I got, I'm more, I'm more um, conscious of my children and those guys looking at my parents. I'm just, I don't have, I don't have that ferocity. I'm not an animal anymore. Does that mean we won't see you fight again? Yeah, that's most likely. I'm not going to fight again. I'm not going to dis, I'm not going to disrespect the sport anymore by losing to this caliber of fighters. The interesting thing about this fight is there was a certain point at which. Kevin McBride did what Danny Williams did. He got past the initial onslaught of Mike Tyson. And we've come to realize that once you do that, if you can take Mike Tyson into the fifth or sixth round, that's deep water for him. Jeff, why did you decide to step in at this point and tell referee Joe Cortez that you didn't want him to continue? I told everybody from day one when I came here that it's somebody I love Mike and him. It's enough. I could see that, you know, he done his best for those rounds. Listen, he wouldn't have done six rounds like that, you know, six months ago, 12 months ago. He done great rounds. I'm so proud of him today. And um, I want him to, I want him not just to get, we lost, but hey, a lot of great fighters lost the last fight. Jeff Fennick did. I want him to go out happy, proud, and able to look after his children. That's what he can do today. Mike, how difficult is this for you emotionally and mentally to see this come to an end after well, after the career you've had? Not much because I don't have any desire for this anymore. So I basically don't care much about the sports. I'm just, um, I'm sorry to disappoint the people. I wish they can get their money back some kind of way. You seemed as though in, in the sixth round like you were fighting for your career not to end with the headbutt. Was it intentional? No, but I'm just in there fighting and I'm a little desperate, so I'm trying to win. Mike, a lot of people wonder what, what you'll do now with your life. Boxing has been your whole life. Well, I'm sure I'll find something to do. Boxing doesn't define me. I'm just sorry to disappoint the people in the city. I know I, I didn't have it in my stomach no more, but I was in dire needs to take care of my life. Is Kevin McBride a good fighter, or was he just somebody caught, who caught you now at, at the end of your career? Well, you know, I can't take anything away from Kevin, but you guys know the situation. People in the boxing world know the situation. I know you've lost tonight. I know it's difficult, but are you in a better place in your head mentally at this portion of your life than you've been in the past? Oh, definitely. I have different friends, different associates. I don't even associate with my old crowd and associates no more. I don't get involved with that. I'm just I'm in a different world right now, totally different spirit. Mike, we appreciate your time. It's been great to watch your career. It's been up and down. We've seen a lot of things out of you, and tonight we appreciate your sportsmanship and the way you've handled this. Thank you very much, Tim Greg. All right, Mike Tyson. Just Jeff. remember, there's 18,000 people here to see a legend, and he ran out of a legend. That's absolutely true. As we bring Kevin McBride in, Mike, thank you. Thank you very much, Mike. Uh, you're a legend, and I appreciate the fight, man. Good man. God bless. Thank you. Kevin, what was your thought process coming into this fight? What did you expect to be the outcome? I thought Mike was going to be fast like he was, and then, uh, you know, I, I stuck the fight with him a bit too much, and, uh, you know, he's a warrior, and uh, I, I respect the man, and I'm a warrior, and I just, you know, I come in a lot of heart from Ireland, you know, and, uh, you know. Were you surprised that he didn't come out like he has in the past, just throwing punches and, and trying to intimidate his opponents, as, as all of the tapes would have indicated to you? Well, you know, Tyson's a clever man. He's trying to look for the opening, and, uh, Thank God uh, he didn't get the punch on, and uh, I, you know, retaliated it good. So, uh, you know, he's a good fighter. Uh, Kevin, stay with us. Mike, I want to ask you, why did you come out so passive? We're so used to seeing you run across the ring in your first barrage of punches in the first round. Why did you change tonight after a career of that? I, you know, I'm just being honest. I'm not taking nothing away from Kevin. I don't love this no more. I'm just in here. Um, I, I just, I don't love this no more. I haven't loved fighting since 1919, 1990. Um, but Kevin, congratulations on your career and good luck. How much, how much were you able to use? Goody Petronelli getting in here as well. How much were you able to use your weight advantage to be inside on Mike and to hang on him? Uh, the, I had a lot of weight on him, and uh, I just, you know. Every day I'm learning something different, and it's great to fight Mike because he's, uh, you know, he's a great warrior, and it's good to have him under the belt. And you know, you just told him he is a legend. What will this mean to you, particularly when you go back to Ireland? Oh, it's great. You know, it's great for Ireland. You know, um, Ireland were crying out for a heavyweight for a long time, and I'm a legitimate uh, contender, not another pretender. I want to. Mike, thank you. We appreciate it. Okay. Kevin. Kevin, finally, let, let me let me ask you, Kevin, while we still have you here. Kevin, hold on a second. Yep, hold on, hold on a second. Kevin, did you feel as though he intentionally headbutted you there in the sixth round? I was trying to break my arm and headbutt me and all that. So, you know, that's the rough tactics of boxing. You know what I mean? And 
Do you know, he wasn't getting his way with me, so, uh, you know, I'm a bigger, stronger man, and a bigger, stronger man will always be the smaller, stronger man, you know, so they just showed tonight, you know. I take a good shot, you know what I mean, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just coming into my prime. I have a lot more to offer to boxing, you know, so I'm just looking forward for the future. Hopefully Showtime will have me on here again, and, you know. As you look forward to the future, tell us a little bit about Goody Petronelli. He seemed to have guided the career of Marvin Hagler pretty well. Yes, you know, uh, Goody Petronelli is a great uh, trainer. You know, he trained Marvin Hagler. He come from the town of champions, Brockton. And we're all champions now. Uh, Pascal Collins here, the younger brother Steve Collins, is running with me every morning. I'm trying to catch up with him. He's a middle And, and uh, uh, Rodriguez, or uh, Radovan here, you know, a good strength coach. I'm lifting 265. I feel strong as an ox. Uh, you know, I didn't get off as quick as I could because, this, uh, you know, it's just very enticing. But, you know, I, I know at the end I was going to take him out, you know. Kevin, congratulations to you. Thanks very much. I did what I had to do. You sure did. All right, let's go back to Steve and Al ringside. Gentlemen. All right, uh, Jim, thank you so much. As Mike Tyson with uh, his advisor, Shelley Finkel, making his way to the uh, dressing room, uh, some people uh, throwing uh, debris at uh, Mike Tyson. You could see uh, his reaction at one point. Uh, this has to be uh, a, a torturous moment for a, uh, a guy like Mike Tyson. Much symbolism here tonight. That certainly a part of it as his career, his career comes to an end. A very tumultuous career. What happened in this fight, I believe, in some respects, very much is his career in a microcosm. Controversy follows Mike Tyson. It did in this fight to a great extent. During the course of this match, of course, um, as it labored on, and he became less and less likely in his mind, apparently, to get this man out of there, Kevin McBride, he would ultimately resort to some of the things that have helped make Mike Tyson a controversial figure. Kevin McBride told us that he idolized Mike Tyson. Tonight, he probably ended the career of Mike Tyson. He may well have. And in the final round of this fight, it began with Mike Tyson doing what we had seen him do against Franz Botha, trying to twist the arm of Kevin McBride. Now, he knows Joe Cur Cortez is on the other side, and you see him twisting the arm. Look at him. Clearly, it's deliberate, and Kevin McBride screaming in pain. This is a replay of what happened with Franz Botha. And Tyson himself complaining about something to Joe Cortez, but clearly he was the culprit. Then Tyson doing something he's also done during the course of his career, using his head there. I mean, that's about as obvious and as deliberate as it can possibly be. And it created the cut. Joe Cortez did take two points away from Mike Tyson because it was so obvious. So while there may be nostalgia and sentiment floating through in some quarters because of Mike Tyson's final fight and the way it ended, clearly this demonstrates what has also dogged him during his career. Now here's a very tired Mike Tyson who admits he had kind of lost his stomach for this, being pushed down by Kevin McBride, and clearly this is a symbolic picture because Tyson simply didn't have the energy or the will to continue and actually was looking for Joe Cortez to give him a hand up and ultimately had to struggle to his feet himself and you got the impression Stephen you wrote me a little note saying maybe he's going to quit on his corner and by golly he did yeah he's just a beaten man here uh, is Mike Tyson Al and uh, from this point on of course we're going to hear career epilogue after career epilogue for the long and tumultuous career of Mike Tyson what I often get from people regarding Tyson the notion of what he could have been many uh, believe he could have been the greatest of course we had the greatest Muhammad Ali in the crowd here earlier even his inspiration wasn't enough for Mike Tyson against a journeyman named Kevin McBride but many feel that the man that McBride beat tonight Mike Tyson could have been the greatest of all time he certainly had the skills at one point in his career obviously other things that brought him down and while Kevin McBride enjoys this very special moment for him there's no question Mike Tyson's career is about unfinished business it's about things that he didn't quite get to accomplish for the most part because of personal demons uh, and other situations that happened in his life but the fact of the man and also lack of training etc but the fact of the matter is Mike Tyson leaves an unfinished legacy and that's an understatement 
You know, boxing's a business. Tyson still elicited interest up until tonight. Uh, whether you like him or not, will there continue to be room for Mike Tyson? He said his heart is not in it. Let's go back to the end of the fight and look and listen to some very interesting stuff. Like something out of Hollywood, some dramatic stuff there. First, uh, Jeff Fedick talking to Mike Tyson. And uh, Tyson basically not even saying anything back to uh, Fennec, uh, just totally discombobulated. Uh, you could see it on his face. He didn't want to continue. The anguish on Mike Tyson's face reflected just about everything. And you could, you could put this 20-year career and what's gone on in the last 20 years and put it all into that picture because that's the kind of anguish Mike Tyson had on his face. Tyson still talks a good game. The entertaining press conferences and all the taunting of opponents but he doesn't have the boxing talent anymore bottom line and even more important and it's the most i think the most salient point tonight he made a candid admission he no longer has the interest or the stomach for this and he's faced by the way with some other interesting problems like his financial issues so uh, mike tyson has some interesting questions to answer in his personal life now as he moves forward well he's got to go back down do a lot of soul searching and decide exactly what he wants to do with his future to take care of a lot of debt. But it doesn't look like it's going to be fighting anymore for Mike Tyson, at least from what we saw and heard here tonight at the MCI Center on a night of history in boxing in and, Washington, D.C. And a big point that needs to be made is he has used up his currency in terms of marketability to boxing fans, I believe. And that's a big part of why we're also likely not to see Mike Tyson uh, fight again. Mike Tyson uh, back there behind closed doors. You see members of the media, reporters uh, waiting to get at the former undisputed heavyweight champion who we may have all seen for the very last time as a professional fr prize fighter. Shelly Finkel, his advisor, uh, trying to hold off the media. Meanwhile, on the other side is Kevin McBride, the victor. Of course, the bulk of our commentary about Mike Tyson because he has been such a major story in boxing. But for this young man, this is a very, very big moment. And what is it? Danny Williams had this big moment, went on to lose to Vitaly Klitschko. So don't be too deceived, but he's a happy man right now. In all due respect. I know Muhammad Ali, but I'm Kevin McBride. I'm coming strong. But well, he's got a good sense of humor, too. He's a nice guy. In all due respect, if you, if you can't beat a, a journeyman like Kevin McBride, who can you beat if you're Mike Tyson? What he did show tonight, though, Steve, he showed a lot of toughness, and you have to admire the fact that he, was, he, he had enough clarity of thought Stevie Collins' brother, Packy, uh, taking the picture. He had enough clarity of thought to continue to do the smart thing in the ring. Get inside, tie him up, do certain things. So you have to give Kevin McBride a lot of credit for that. Yeah, he was smart, intelligent in the ring against a uh, fighter who just doesn't have it anymore. And perhaps Tyson will fight again. But if there was any doubt about Mike Tyson's talent, it is but a fond memory. But what a relief and what a 
tremendous feeling for Mr. Kevin McBride out of Clonus, Ireland. Now, Dorchester, Massachusetts, trains in the same gym as one of the all-time greats did, marvelous Marvin Hagler in Brockton, Massachusetts. And Marvin Hagler, whose birthday is coming up, sent a special message to Kevin McBride through Goody Petronelli saying, give me a birthday present. Well, um, happy over, birthday. Yeah, over in Milan, Italy. Marvin, you're probably watching. You know what? He gave you your birthday present, uh, and it was a nice one. With icing on the cake, Kevin McBride can afford to uh, take a big, deep breath, sit back, and take it all in. We have, this has been a year in boxing, a year and a half in which we have seen so many dramatic upsets, a lot really in the last year and a half, and this one right up at the top of the list. And uh, let's check out uh, for the record how the scoring went uh, up to the point at the uh, stoppage for Tyson versus McBride. First, we'll take a look at the official judges' uh, scorecards. Wow. How about this? They had a split decision to Tyson. This count with the two-point deduction for the uh, shenanigans by Tyson. So uh, Artiste had it 57-55 McBride. The other two had it for Tyson. Tammy Jenkins by two and uh, Rados by two for Tyson. I agreed with uh, Artiste's uh, scoring. I had a two points for McBride at that point. And we'll take a look at the uh, press row uh, scorers. Julian Bergauer from FightNews.com had Tyson up 57-55. Chuck Johnson, USA Today, had McBride by two points. And George Willis from the New York Post had McBride up. Biggest disparity there, four points, 58-54. to 54. So Press Row had it as a split decision for McBride. Interesting. So Press Row did not see it the same way as the official ringside uh, judges. And that's two points that were deducted from Tyson. Obviously, uh, it had a big impact on how they scored it. So... What a night. As, what a night here at the MCI Center as the fans uh, file out. And uh, Mr. McBride continues in a sort of a low-key way to celebrate, <laughs> surrounded by family and friends. He did the improbable uh, no. this evening. And again, created probably the biggest upset in what has been uh, an upset in late in year. And in the words of Mike Tyson, that could be it. It's over. Thanks, everybody. But, you know, the holy we know how it is in the world of boxing. We've seen guys retire time and time out, and then they come back. But in this case, it is probably a wise thing for Tyson to call it a day, call it a career. Gave uh, people a lot of thrills uh, throughout the, uh, the course of time and a lot of tumult. And Pike are going to win it together. It ends, unfortunately, first the loss to Danny Williams. They thought, oh, maybe that was a fluke. Maybe it wasn't a knee injury. Maybe it wasn't fatigue. We thought it was fatigue. And, uh, of course, that came into play again in this particular fight against Kevin McBride. Yeah, and I think the big factor here is the fact that they could spin the Williams fight because of the knee. Uh, there was an injury, and it was a legitimate injury in which he uh, got surgery, though we thought both of us, Williams, uh, had as much to do with the loss as that knee. This one, the problem is not only can you not spin what happened in the ring, Mike Tyson made it so clear after this fight that he doesn't have the stomach to fight anymore, is not sure he has the, the will to get ready to fight and doesn't simply doesn't want to do it anymore and I think the other most salient point is all that debris being thrown on him as he left some of the booze from the fans tells you that whatever currency he had left with fans is now gone. You know, it's interesting because prior to the fight and the days leading up to this fight, Tyson was telling uh, the media that even if he would lose this mm -hmm. fight to Kevin yep. McBride, he was going to continue. He probably said that thinking, there's no way I can lose this fight. But he did lose the fight, and now he says he doesn't have the heart for it and that he won't continue fighting. And, of course, we're not that naive to suggest that people don't change their mind and that in boxing people don't change their mind. But I think part of the decision will be made for Mike Tyson because I just don't think he's marketable anymore as someone to sell a pay-per-view or sell 17,000 tickets or 20,000 tickets uh, in an arena. Now it's just going to be interesting to uh, sit back and wait and see what happens from this point on in the uh, life and times of Michael Gerard Tyson. I think an appearance on a surreal life could be in his future. <laughs> yeah. Unbelievable. We're going to 
take one last listen, and this will be with a lot more clarity between Jeff Fennick and Mike Tyson near the end. Now, now I think we can devise from that that it was much conflict and confusion in that mm -hmm. corner. Jeff Fennick, you could hear saying, screaming to the rest of the people, I'm in charge, I'm in charge. He took control of the situation and was the one that uh, suggested to Mike Tyson, maybe you've had enough. And as we just saw last week in the Costa Zoo situation, the corner being the impetus for the fight to be stopped, but the fighter acquiescing to what his corner wants. Yeah, so Mike Tyson uh, not coming out to answer the bell for round number uh, seven, and then it was celebration time for uh, Kevin McBride. All 6-6 six, six of the Clonus Colossus is uh, colossal back in Ireland tonight, no question about it. Uh, he's going to make a lot of people happy uh, back home and in the uh, Massachusetts uh, area as well. And clearly, some will nitpick over this because uh, Kevin McBride is not a top heavyweight, but for him, this is his moment of glory, and he had it even at the expense of a diminished Mike Tyson. So tonight, uh, Al, we may have witnessed the end of an era. We would think. So as we wind things down from the MCI Center in our nation's capital, let's take a final look at tonight's results. Shambe Mitchell declaring lookout welterweight division, the former junior welterweight champion and hometown favorite with a successful jump in weight, although not the way he wanted it. It ended on a couple of cuts as he beat Chris Smith. And in the second fight, Leila Ali continued her domination of women's boxing, remained undefeated, retained her super middleweight belt with a win over the less experienced Erin Tohill. And as we just saw in our main event, journeyman Kevin McBride handed Mike Tyson his second straight loss, third in his last four fights, and probably ended the long and tumultuous career of the former undisputed heavyweight champ who said he doesn't have the heart to fight anymore. As a boxing fan, the first thing I felt that night was shock. There was no way Kevin McBride was supposed to still be standing after the first round. Final 10 seconds of the first round. Many thought it would be over by now. Our time. Okay, so throw the script out the window. Now we don't, now we don't know what's gonna happen. Even though I knew going in that Mike Tyson was just a shell of the fighter that he was, but Kevin McBride was so bad and the fact that uh, he was able to really handle Mike Tyson with relative ease shows you just how far Mike has gone. During the Tyson-McBride fight, what basically happened was a microcosm of the latter portion of Tyson's career. If he can't knock you out early, he will grow frustrated, he will give up, and in this case, he had a guy who wasn't the most talented opponent, but he stood up to Tyson. He was willing to hang in there for a few rounds. We're into round three, and so far, certainly an inartistic effort. Is Mike Tyson biding his time? Is he just incapable of attacking the way he needs to to get Kevin McBride out of there? And how much credit can we give to McBride for hanging in there? It wasn't a situation where McBride was, you know, the reincarnation of uh, Rocky Marciano. Here's a guy who, you know, who, who's just off. Tyson jumping on McBride, and McBride doing the wise thing and tying him up, but look Something out. Something happened, he's trying to break his arm again. We've seen this look before, at, and McBride injures his left arm. We're now in an area where Tyson is very frustrated. And now there's blood uh, around the left eye of McBride. That came, I believe, from a clash of heads. Two point headbutt. You know, the, the saddest thing was him sitting on the canvas and you know, reaching up to the referee, you know, like, help me up. And he's having difficulty getting up. He wants Joe Cortez to help him. He can barely make it to his feet at the bell. 
And the referee's like, you know, I'm not counting you out and I'm not helping you up. You're on your own. So if you want to quit, you're going to have to quit on your own. I'm not taking you off the hook. Tyson returns to his corner in the round after which he was sitting on the canvas. Whispers in his trainer, Jeff Fennick's ear, I quit. And then you see Fennick wave his hands over to say, I call the fight, it's over. I'm the boss. I'm the fucking boss. Enough, yes. Enough. This was a classic case of not only a corner man doing the right thing to protect his fighter and that little bit of pride and dignity that might remain, but also a friend, because Jeff Fennick has always been a friend of Mike Tyson. And he showed me a lot, the same heart that he always had when he was a champion fighter, to take the fall for the fighter who had just taken a fall. In that Jim Gray interview, he finally admitted to the world uh, that, that boxing just isn't in his heart anymore. And it was, it was a very powerful scene. Mike, first let's start with you. Did you want to continue? Well, I would like to have continued, but I saw that I was getting beat on. I realized I don't think I have it anymore because um, I got the ability to stay in shape, but I don't got the fighting guts, I don't think, anymore. Um, I'm just sorry I let everybody down. I mean, I just don't have this in my heart anymore. In terms of how boxing fans view Tyson, I would say the Tyson McBride fight was important because it gave a lasting impression, certainly a negative impression. And I think there's going to be a lot of revisionist history about Mike Tyson, mostly unfair to him. People will forget how good he was, if not how great he was. Yeah, you kind of felt sad because here was an athlete who at one time was really legitimately at the top and for a very short period of time was among the best ever in that division. Uh, and when you saw Mike that night, you know, kind of just surrendering basically, you know, you had to feel sorry for this once great fighter who realized, you know what, I'm at the very bottom right now. That's it. And he, you know, lights out, stays dark, walks off, goodbye. You know, I'm just tired of fighting. Boxing has no place in my heart anymore. What I've done in the past is a, is a history, and what I'm going to do in the future is a mystery.